Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. So uh, this is another video in our uh, BR Engineering series and uh, the idea behind the BR Engineering series is to give you some uh, prototypical information and to show you uh, how to research some of this information. Not necessarily so you can have like a super accurate layout but you know mainly to do um, simple stuff like basic operations so that uh, you don't make uh, you know silly mistakes or um, do stuff on your layout that, that simply isn't really prototypical, especially if you're trying to make it look uh, reasonably um, reasonably uh, realistic. So, um, you know, nothing has to be perfect or anything like that, but basically stuff like left hand running and, and running the right kind of rolling stock with locomotives, um, it's usually just something you want to do anyway to make it uh, look, look a little bit more correct. So um, in this video, we're going to show you how um, you can do various different types of research uh, to figure that sort of stuff out. So the first thing I'm going to show you is um, actually this this book here, which is the uh, British Railway Engineering Encyclopedia. Now you can get this online. I um, can't remember exactly where I got this, but I think it was uh, printed. Um, it's done by uh, Mr. Ian Ellis, and uh, it's actually a really good book. This is the second edition. Um, has all sorts of uh, different things you can get to here. Oh, I got it from lulu.com, that's right. Um, but you can go to uh, www.analyst.co.uk. Uh, you can see it as right there. And uh, this particular book is, is very, very good. It's basically an encyclopedia of uh, British uh, railway engineering terms. Um, so there's all sorts of uh, really good information in there. So if you don't know what something means or if you're not quite sure uh, how it's supposed to work, uh, this book will give you uh, at least a starting point uh, to do some research on it. So um, the next set of things here, I'm just going to show you uh, a variety of uh, books and things I picked up off of eBay recently. Um, some of these are um, internal British Railway um, publications that um, Bior have published over the years and so some of them can give you some uh, really good information on in kind of um, how how things ran. Now you can get uh, newer books and you can get newer magazines um, but I found that if you actually uh, can dig up the, the older ones especially on eBay where they're going pretty cheap I think I've got some of these things for under a pound uh, on eBay in fact I think this whole stack that I have here uh, it only cost me about six or seven pounds. I think it costs more to ship it. Um, and the nice thing with it is you can actually get articles and, and stuff like that um, from the actual time period. So they're, they're more accurate and uh, have a slightly different perspective than uh, what you'd get uh, by someone maybe looking back and, and trying to remember things from memory. So um, this uh, first book here is actually by the uh, Railway Correspondence and Travel Society that was founded in 1928 and uh, basically it's um, it's a book of all the various uh, ruling stock, uh, coaching stock that um, the British Rail had at the time. So this one's uh, from 1980. You can see there it has general notes, vehicle type and design codes, depot codes, and all sort of uh, useful information. So this is kind of useful if you want to maybe uh, renumber things, uh, see how particular trains ran. So for example, uh, if I look up here, um, this guy, here's Southern Region, for example, uh, class uh, 201 gives me the various formations and uh, the running numbers. So I can actually look this up uh, for various different locomotives that I have, uh, or DMUs, and, and so on, and see um, if the numbers I have are actually how it ran, and um, it's it's kind of useful. And so some pictures in there as well, and uh, in general it's a, a very useful um, set of information to have. And I was also lucky enough that the guy selling this one also had the 1981 version, so I had uh, something to compare as well. Um, now, I had a couple of other uh, things here. So, for example, uh, this is uh, in connection with working trains designated by uh, code words. Uh, so, it's uh, there to be kept secure. And um, this is actually from August 1957. And it has inspector written on the top there. 
There's a British Rail application for free tickets uh, sitting there. Uh, has various different things about the head codes and uh, other information on there. So um, we'll uh, take a look at some of these things in more detail later on. But uh, for example, here it has uh, some of the operational details. So where uh, tunnels, where tunnels exist, arrangements must be made for lines through the tunnels to be inspected by a competent man or men provided with hand signals and detonators immediately prior to the passage of special trains to see that everything is in order for passage of such a train. So obviously this looks like it was um, for um, you know highly secure or um, special trains that required a little bit extra security. Uh, maybe they were for uh, important people or, or important cargo. Um, so it's uh, kind of interesting to see that they actually had stuff like that. Um, here is another one, and this one is in connection with operating Royal Trains, and it's from the 1st of March 1965, and um, it has various uh, operating information inside of it for uh, various different scenarios that could happen, and shunting operations, how to uh, suspend engineering works, and uh, road level crossings, and uh, that's for when they were operating uh, royal trains. Um, also, here's a kind of a stock book with some photos um, that was included. Uh, this here kind of gives you some of the idea of what um, certain, uh, this is uh, I think Nine Valley Railway, Railway a stock book at the time. I'm not quite sure what year this is from. Uh, it looks kind of old. So it um, gives you kind of an idea of what was running on that preserved railway at the time, um, which is kind of cool. And then uh, what we have here are some of these uh, railway magazines. And these are actually kind of interesting. They uh, have uh, some uh, reasonably decent quality um, photos in there. And then they have uh, various different uh, you know, articles in here about uh, different things. And these are written at the time, and especially this is around uh, 1960. I got some from uh, 1961 as well, from different months. Um, so you can uh, take a look and see uh, as steam was kind of winding down in uh, in Britain, uh, what was going on. Uh, you can see here the kind of uh, see the inside of the new looking. Uh, Kitchen cars and buffet cars at the time. They were talking about uh, you know some new bridges being added and various different things. So it actually is uh, what was kind of going on at the railway um, at the time. Uh, for example, here's one in August 1960, and it's uh, it's when the uh, blue pullman was uh, first introduced. Um, so you can see there there's an article about the uh, the locomotive itself and uh, some interior shots of it and basically it's a lot of uh, very useful information um, about how things were perceived at the time and since um, you know a lot of times you're, you're modeling this stuff um, you want to try to uh, keep it as, as accurate as you can or it might give you some useful information um, you know about some extra details that you might not have uh, realized and you can see there this was uh, two shillings and six pence so um, these are reasonably um, good quality magazines, and I got the ones I picked up were in, in pretty good shape. Uh, I might try to pick up some more on eBay, but for now, that's a uh, very useful source of some information, and we'll share that throughout the uh, coming months. I uh, also picked up this, which is a um, British Railways Western Region Working Timetable. Um, now, I think this is uh, private and not for uh, publication. This is actually an internal. Um, timetable uh, for these particular lines. You can see here it's uh, Swindon and Patchway to Bristol and uh, Taunton, I think that's the way you pronounce that. Um, so you can see there it, it covered various different branches and this was the one from uh, May 2nd 1977 to uh, May 7th 1978. And I got this mainly just to kind of check it out. Uh, it was kind of a unique item that I saw in there um, and it kind of gives you a, kind of a, a kind of a idea of how long it, it took and you can see here it has uh, Chippenham which is uh, one of the other reasons I, I picked it up um, so you can see there it actually gives you 
kind of uh, times and operations and stuff like that. So um, I thought it might be kind of cool um, sometime once the uh, the mall railway is uh, a little further along in terms of um, scenics. I might be able to use this to actually uh, put together a kind of a realistic running session or something like that. Alright, so um, that's it for this video. I just uh, wanted to show you those items that we picked up and uh, it's kind of a couple of tips there for um, picking things up. Now you can pick these things up on eBay really, really cheap. I think I picked this up for a couple of pounds. And like I said, the, the rest of these magazines were all under a pound each. Um, so it's uh, definitely uh, worth uh, looking into. So I um, hope you uh, found this video useful. Uh, if there's uh, any questions you have or any comments, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see something I just showed you, uh, for example, I've got a couple of these. Uh, please feel free uh, to ask and I'll see what I can do. Alright, so um, that's it and I hope you enjoyed the video.